This video is sponsored by GLC PCB, but more about this later. So now the frame is ready and now I need to install this robot arm to this frame again. In the first play I disassembled this robot arm from the frame because it was not fitting in my car. It's quite heavy robot arm, it's around 20 kilos, so it's better to use the help to move it somewhere, but I will try to do it by myself. Ta-da! Hello and welcome to my channel. Some time ago I made a video about Aegus robot arm, this one. And in this video I installed this robot arm on the frame and also I explained how this robot arm works from the theoretical point of view. But in this video we would like to see how this robot arm works from practical point of view. And for this I need a controller for this robot arm. The original controller is quite expensive. So the robot arm itself cost around 4.5k and the controller cost another 3k, so it's almost the same price as for the robot arm. This is too much. So in this video I'm going to build this controller by myself, the cheap version. And last time for this I already made this test bench, which has the stepper motor, encoder, TMC5160 and Tindy. So the idea is that Tindy sends the signal to the TMC5160 and this one will control the stepper, taking into account the encoder and stuff like this. So in this video we need to make this test bench working. Afterwards we need to replicate this for the five motors. So one TMC is going to control five TMC5160, which are going to control five motors. And we need five motors because this robot arm has five axes. And if everything is going to work fine, we're going to control this TMC with the Raspberry Pi. And if everything works really, really perfect, we will try to control this Raspberry Pi with the PS4 PlayStation 4 joystick. So like this we will be able, if everything works like it's supposed to, to run this robot arm with the joystick, with the PlayStation joystick. This should be really fun. By the way, this controller which I'm building should be usable for most stepper-based robotic arms. 5 degree stepper-based robotic arms. But it should be also quite easy to uh, extend this controller to the 6 degrees and 7 degrees. But we're going to start with 5. Let's get started. Big thanks to the IGUS for sponsoring this robot. This robot arm has 5 degrees of freedom, payload up to 3 kg meter, they reach 790 millimeters, and without controller it cost around 4.5 thousand dollars. This is Swiss franc and Swiss franc is uh, approximately equal to 1 US dollar. With the controller it cost almost 8 thousand US dollars. And with the controller and joystick it cost more than 9.5 thousand US dollars. So this is how the joystick looks like. Our joystick is going to be PlayStation 4 joystick, so our is going to be way better. If it's going to work, <laughs> we'll see. Let's start programming. Ha! We're going to use TMC5160 BOB, this one, and it has the maximum phase current 2.8 amp. If this is going to be not powerful enough, for some reason, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be okay, we can use this one. This is TMC5160 Evaluation. It's uh, five times more expensive than the previous one, but at the same time it can drive the phase current up to 4.7 amp. So if this one is not powerful enough, we will go with this one. I have chosen TMC5160 because I can control it with the SPI and like this I can directly tell to the TMC5160 to which position I would like to go. So I don't need to use steps and directions as with other drivers. So this is going to simplify the firmware for the TMC. Now let's program the TMC. So this is the first program for TMC which I wrote and this program based on the library TMC5160. And actually this is uh, just an example from this library. Here I put the correct numbers for the pins. These are the parameters which initialize the driver. I have no idea how it works and which kind of parameters I should put there, but uh, I hope that it's going to work. And if it doesn't, we will try to find out what to put here. This is SPI. We need uh, this driver in the position mode. 
this is a max speed, this is acceleration. And over here in our main loop, what we do is that every three seconds we change the direction and we move our motor. We move it either in 200 position or at zero position. 200 position is one revolution. Because this motor has 200 steps per revolution. And every 100 millisecond we print the position of the motor and the speed of the motor. So here we get the position, here we get the current speed and we print them in the serial port. Let's put this program to the Tinsy and see if it works. The power is on, I use the 24 volts. Now the power for the Tinsy. Done. Haha, -ha, and it works. And we have the current position and current speed. Perfect. This is a good start. Now what we need to do is uh, we need to take into account the encoder because right now there is uh, no encoder involved. And I would like to use encoder because there is this encoder on the robot arm and with encoder we can have the feedback and check that we are not skipping the steps. This is exactly the same Arduino program as before. But I have added this line in order to take into account the encoder. And over here I print the encoder position instead of velocity. Let's upload this program. And we have both motor position and encoder position. And they are quite close one to another. This is good. Now we need to take into account encoder index. This will give us the zero of the encoder. Like this we will have the absolute value of the position of our motor. So this is the same program where I have added this line. And this line gives that the driver is going to look for the position of the index. It's going to remember where the index position. In this line I'm taking into account this encoder position. So first of all the motor is going to rotate in one direction, in another direction. Like this it's going to measure where is the index. And when we know where is the index we're going to this position. So when we rotate a couple of times we get the latched encoder position, we get the encoder position and we set motor zero to this value. And we switch off the encoder latching. So like this after this line it's not going to look for the index anymore. Let's upload the program. Before putting the power let's rotate the motor to the arbitrary value. I have marked the shaft of the motor so like this you can see the orientation. It rotates in one direction. It rotates into another direction and it goes to zero. Ha! Look, now it's aligned. Perfect. Test bench is working. And now we need to do the same stuff but for the five motors. And this is going to be complicated and with a lot of wires. So in order to make it easy and also beautiful, I'm going to use the PCB. And for this I'm going to use the GLC PCB servers because I used it before in my professional life and it was always good quality and always fast. In order to make this PCB I used easy EDA. First of all because this is online tool and I don't need to install anything on my computer. And the second point it's free. And also there are the third point which may be the most important one is that in easy EDA you have a huge library of the components and like this it's easy and fast to make the PCB. So this is the schematics which I made. And uh, what I told you that over here in the library there are a lot of components and you can put here whatever you want. Like over here TNZ 4.0 and you have here components. This is user contributed component so you need to be really careful with them. But you can find a lot of good stuff here. So over here what I have, I have here the TNZ, I have here the five drivers and I have here optocouplers. In order to take the signal from the encoder I use the optocouplers. And in my first schematic I made an error here and I put the optocouplers in the wrong way. So I connected them wrongly. Why I need optocouplers? Because the signal from the encoder of this robot arm is uh, bidirectional. There is signal positive and signal negative. And for the TMC5160 you need to put uh, unidirectional or one directional. You need just one signal like signal and ground. When I had my scheme I made a PCB. I made a design of the PCB over here. So basically I put all the components 
and I use auto router in order to connect all these components together and for me it worked well so uh, yeah I was happy with it. When you have your PCB design you can go here and export it as Gerber file and after this we order this PCB on GLC PCB because it's fast and cheap. So go to the GLC PCB order now you just add Gerber file this one upload wait a couple of seconds it analyzes your file, it shows your beautiful PCB over here. Basically I used all the default uh, parameters and you push save to cart. Afterwards you pay, you wait a couple of days and you have a beautiful PCBs. Ha! So I received my PCB in this nice box. They're really beautiful. And I even started to solder some components. And quite quickly I figured it out that uh, this PCB has a huge error. This was my fault because in the schematic I put uh, the optocouplers in the wrong direction and uh, in order to solve this I decided to redo everything and reorder the PCB. And the good point here is that GLC PCB service is quite fast and so it was not so complicated to reorder these PCBs. And in less than a week I had a new I hope that here I did not do any mistakes. I have soldered the components for one single motor over here. So there is a Tinsy, there is two power converters, there is a TMC5160 driver, three optocouplers for the encoder and optocoupler for this home switch. So like this we can test one single axis of the robot arm. And I will try the last axis because it can rotate 360 degrees. Tinsy, power, this is motor home switch and encoder. Let me show you the simple program which I wrote to run this one single axis. This is the channel for the home switch. And here I do the calibration. So first of all I do the index calibration and afterwards I do the home calibration. So for this I need to find out if the home switch is uh, off or if the home switch is on. And uh, depending on the where the home switch I rotate in one direction or another direction. And when the calibration is done it should just rotate this axis in one direction or another direction. Something like this. So let's upload and see if it works. Ha! Huh. I actually already tested it and I know that it works. So this is our robot arm. And this is axis number five. And I'm going to put the screw over here on this axis. Like this we will see if it's going to rotate. So this is the index calibration. Now it's doing the home calibration. The home calibrated very quickly because it was close to the home position. Maybe it does not look exciting right now, but I'm really happy that it works. It means that there is hope for the entire robot arm and for our controller. Yeah! Now I would like to control our controller with Raspberry Pi through USB. And our Raspberry Pi I'm going to control with the joystick from PlayStation. So basically signal goes from here to here, to Tinsy, to the TMC5160 and to our motor. Let's try to implement this. So this is a program for the Tinsy. And the main part which I added to this program is over here in the loop. And here I read the data from the serial port and I put this data in the variable POSA1 which stands for the position axis 1. And afterward I move our motor to this position and I send to the serial the data with the position, with the velocity and the data about deviation between the encoder and position. Now let's look at the Python program which is going to be run on the Raspberry Pi. This is our Python code and over here I use the serial module in order to communicate with the TNZ. And I use a module Pi game in order to get the data from the joystick. Over here I print the position, the position of our motor. I actually made this program for the five motors, but for the moment we're going to use only one. Here I send the position through the serial. Here the function to receive the position through the serial. Here I initialize our joystick. I initialize some data, blah blah blah, initialize the serial. And here our main loop. And here I read the data from the joystick. And I put this data in these variables. These variables I used over here. I check that position is not too big and not too small. And I send this position through the serial to the Tinsy. So enough the theory, let's see how it works. For this I need the terminal. Switch on the joystick. It's already paired with the Raspberry Pi. Now let's connect our Tinsy to the Raspberry Pi. Okay, let's wait uh, the calibration. 
let's run our program and <laughs> and we can move our motor with the joystick it's actually quite responsive so I'm happy with it and in the window over here in the terminal you can see the position So beautiful, yeah. Ooh. I have installed plenty connectors to the wires from the robot arm, and now I need to take care of the power supply. For this, I'm going to use this 400 watts, 24 volts power supply with this emergency stop button. And it's all going to be connected with this plastic part. So this is going to be one unit, power supply and emergency stop button. Looks cool. This is calibration of the Axis 5. When it's done, the calibration of the Axis 4 starts. Now there is a search for the home switch. Now starts the calibration of the Axis 3. Now it starts the calibration of the Axis 2. And calibration of the last Axis number 1. The calibration of the base. When the calibration is done, we need to start our Python program. My PS4 joystick is already paired with the Raspberry Pi. And now we can move the robot arm using the joystick. So basically this joystick I used in order to move the axis number one, axis number two. These two triggers I used to move the axis number three. And this joystick I used to move the axis number four and five. Let's run the robot arm for the second time, just to check that it's not a fluke, just to be sure that it works properly. And so this is calibration, automatic calibration. The axis 3, axis 2 and the base.
This is so cool! Yeah! I played with the robot for 10 minutes to see if the temperature of the drivers will rise significantly. And the temperature of our controller is only 42 degrees, so it's uh, perfect! I was afraid that it's going to heat up like crazy, but no. And the motor is also quite cold, so no problem here. It's impressive, it took me a long time, but it's working! And I can control it with the joystick, this is so cool! And another thing which I would like to point out is that this controller can be used with any robot arm which uses NEMA 17 or NEMA 23 stepper motor and has up to 5 degrees of freedom. In the future, I plan to develop the similar controller for the 6 degrees of robot arm and uh, higher. My main concern about this controller was the temperature, because I was afraid that these drivers they are going to heat up like crazy and I would need to use the heat sink with some fans and this is going to make everything bulky and more complicated. So I'm really really happy that it works like this and uh, there is no much temperature issue. Of course, I did not make a proper test, I did not put a high payload on this robot arm, but up to now this looks really promising. Huge thanks goes to the GLC PCB for sponsoring this video. I do plan to make another video with this robot arm, because I would like to make everything compact and pretty. For the moment this board is just laying on the table, but I would like to solve this issue. And uh, maybe to find a good application to this robot arm. So please leave a comment with your ideas of the application for this robot arm. Thank you for watching this video till the end. Huge thank you to people who support me, who still support me on the Patreon and YouTube channel membership. Here's their names. Thanks to these brave people, this channel is still exists and I'm still doing this kind of stuff, which I hope is interesting and useful for my viewers. As usual, stay safe, good luck with your projects and see you next time.